Welcome to Defund the BBC. I'm Ted Jeffrey, and joining me this week is Conservative MP and entrepreneur Marco Longy. Marco, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure, Ted. Always is. Now, uh, John Redwood mentioned this week how he'd been invited onto Newsnight, and despite being reassured that they wouldn't script what he was saying, they then proceeded to do exactly that and attempt to get him to talk about something which he had not expressed the view on. Is this not an example of our state broadcaster trying to, at times, you know, control and conduct the narrative rather than deliver impartial and fact-based news? Of course it is. And I think every broadcaster needs to show a modicum of of respect to anybody they are seeking to interview. It's a two-way street. I think anybody who is being interviewed uh, is happy to pass their opinions just as I am, but they don't have to. They're under no obligation to do so. And and and, and media channels uh, often uh, rely on the goodwill of those people who are being interviewed. So I uh, it, it, it starts with a question of respect, but you're absolutely right in terms of uh, how the BBC in particular, I think, is looking to control the narrative. Um, you know, I've, I've always been, going back decades now, a huge admirer of the BBC. I have lived and worked in several countries, including the Amazon jungle, where I had a little digital radio and I was able to pick, oh no, what? it was a high frequency, it wasn't a digital one. Um, and I was able just about to pick up the BBC World Service. And I was in my early 20s, early mid 20s at the time, so a long time ago. And uh, it kept me in touch with civilization. You cannot imagine how much I relied on that and that connection to home and when I used to come home, just watching the BBC compared to the channels I observed in, in, in countries around the world, you, you just felt you were, you were watching a, a, a channel in a different category to all. And so it breaks my heart to have to say that, you know, I, I no longer feel that way uh, about uh, the BBC, that there may be uh, product offerings and, and indeed maybe the World Service may still fall into that category, but the BBC as a whole, I, I, I think has lost its way in the last, in the last 15 years, 20 years or so. It's, it, 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 for what, you know, one of the things it is most renowned for is its impartiality. And, and this is something that unfortunately, uh, every reasonable person can now see the BBC is not behaving in a way that is uh, impartial and and uh, you know when it first started happening i used to think you know maybe this is just the person doing the interviewing the, 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 the that specific broadcaster and journalist uh, but then it just happened again and again and again and 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 when complaints go in you might as well just you know watch paint dry because the system is completely unfit for purpose when you complain and uh, it's judge and jury isn't it uh, with them and and when, 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 you, when you think about it being you know, a public service broadcast, it's just, it's just not right. You know, the public are funding something and therefore it should be completely impartial. And it quite clearly isn't. So I, I, I'm very sorry. I am very much in the defund the BBC camp. And um, it's not that I don't want to see the BBC continue and offer some of the products that it's, uh, offers which are genuinely excellent products, but it needs to do it on a level playing field with the rest of uh, the re of the media who have to compete. Uh, and, uh, and 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 then you know when 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 they do that, they they are more at liberty, I guess, to take sides if that's what they intend to do. But while they are funded effectively through a taxation of sorts the public, then they, they should behave in a way that is very impartial and, and, and they're not. So that does it for me, I'm afraid. No, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, one, no, well, a programme this week which has been in the spotlight and under fire has been uh, BBC uh, Radio 4's Women's Hour. Uh, they appear to be on Twitter pushing the topic of introducing age-appropriate porn for teenagers. 
Now, I mean, I suppose, wouldn't you agree that this is an extremely dangerous for our public service broadcaster to not only be using, as we talk about taxpayers' money, to push this agenda, but also to promote pornographic content, which many in society can adopt quite an unpleasant addiction to? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, I, I haven't seen that. So uh, and it doesn't surprise me. Uh, but for, so thank you to, for pointing it out to me. I, I, I think it's appalling. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a father to two grown-up women now. One is 18 and one is 21. I still see them as my children, of course, and I know I will do so in 10 years' time. But uh, having been through parenthood and... Um, uh, you you always worry about the children, and, and, and particularly in today's day and age, when access to um, materials uh, it is easier because of the advent of digital technologies. Uh, what you don't want to do is to make your you know is to see your national broadcaster the 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 example of 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 if you like of how things should be done. Uh, Going down, going down this route. I think it's appalling. It, it, it disgusts me actually. So I haven't seen the detail of that. So um, forgive me for not uh, being a bit more informed in my answer. But I'm, I'm, I, I think it's dreadful if that's what they're considering doing. That that is another something else I'd want to complain about if that if that is the case. Well, this is the, the thing, and in, in terms of that topic of talking about teenage appropriate pornography, you know, it's not like this was even discussed at. A, a sort of either a government level it wasn't even a debate or anything it was a topic which they'd taken from the uh the journalist and well call herself commentator uh flora gill so it was something which had become sort of viral on twitter and then they decided to sort of poach it as a, as a topic but no i'm sure most people will, will agree with I, I mean I, i'm just outstanding that pornography is deemed appropriate at any age on a national broadcaster no, exactly. You know, the fact that we are talking about, you know, that there is an age at which this is appropriate is, is rather disgusting. You know, pe people can feed their habit for pornography in other places. The last place I would want to consider doing that is by a state-funded broadcaster. Exactly. And, uh, it's just appalling. Just appalling. Real, real lack of duty of care there, I think. Oh, um, unbelievable. But yes, uh, so the BBC have also reached a new low this week by, you know, not only just that, you know, coming up with that topic, but also by threatening to report women to the police for speaking out on the destruction of women's sport. I'm sure this is a story you probably came across. Obviously, you know, the Olympics have been happening and we had the weightlifter, the transgender weightlifter. Right, right. Yeah. So obviously a lot of people and actually very, very frustrated, complaining um, about and quite right too. What the BBC were kind of putting out on social media was that people who are talking out about this are responsible for stirring up hatred. Wow. I, 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 I mean, what, what, what is wrong? I mean, this isn't just the BBC, is it? These are other aspects of society as well, but it's just unfortunately not unsurprising. But the fact that the BBC would go down this route, well, what? What have women done to deserve this? I don't understand it. You know, uh, clearly somebody who is competing in an arena amongst people who were born uh, biologically as, as a female uh, are going to be clearly at a disadvantage if they are then going to be competing with someone who has transitioned who may, whose testosterone levels may well be similar to those of other women, but whose body mass has over a couple of decades or more developed with the biology of that of a man and therefore is going to be inherently physiologically at an advantage compared to others. I'm sorry, the, 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 this is just not right. And, and, and this is where women are being treated very unfairly you know i i we have to we 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 have to have a, a an open debate about this without the fear of being uh shouted at or or criminalized in any way and if that's the suggestion that you're telling me that the bbc is going down the route of it's just appalling
is just appalling. And, and, and we, we have to be stressed about uh, what we believe is right. Of course, people are quite entitled to, you know, if they want to change their sex, that is absolutely fine. They should be supported all the way in that. But they need to understand also that the rest of society is configured in a certain way. And what we can't do is make it incredibly unfair for other sections of society as a result of, of, of a person's uh, desperate need. I, I, I quite firmly believe that. Uh, and, and, and they need supporting to change. But we can't, we can't make other aspects of society, you know, victimize them for the fact that others, uh, a, a tiny minority, but nevertheless, uh, um, find themselves in this predicament. I, 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 I feel awful about this, you know, because I can see both sides of the equation here. Um, it, it must be, it, it must be dreadful feeling trapped in a in, in in a different body. But you also have to accept that um, it, it it it's something that has to be dealt with in the same way as people who are born with uh, other physiological differences accept that maybe their life is different because of that as well yeah yeah exactly exactly now uh now youtube is uh, is king when it comes to teenagers viewing habits uh despite the bbc's woke push for younger viewers you know they, they still aren't interested leaving the license fee a bit like a, a polar bear on a receding ice block uh, Marco, what do you make of you know the fact that a lot of youngsters are now you know, ditching the BBC to just watch things and stream things online? Uh, it's just the BBC uh, as the dinosaur that it has become, uh, just not keeping pace with how society is changing. It it wants to show that it is in some ways and, and, and it believes that maybe the woke agenda is the way to go, uh, but it's not. It, it's, it's consistently making the wrong choices and, and, and it's consistently proving to people out there that the BBC, as it stands, is not fit for purpose. Uh, of, of course, there will be many people, particularly older generations, who will you know, maybe just watch BBC One or BBC Two and nothing else. So telling them we're going to scrap the license fee might be something that might uh, scare them. But then, you know, it's a, just a case of having a conversation with them and saying, look, do you perhaps occasionally watch other channels? Yes. You know, do you watch Sky? Do you watch other uh, uh, other channels? Yes. And do you, do you know, oh, yes, I might watch the Internet and Netflix when my grandchildren come by. And kind of, well, that is the new world. And it's a world that the BBC should really uh, look to embracing um, rather than focusing on other agendas. And it really needs to rationalize its product offer as well. I mean, it's got so many, so many different channels, so many different uh, things that it does. It's just not, um, uh, like I said before, fit for purpose. It's, it's, I'd love to see uh, some of the statistics uh, for um, you know, for how many people actually watch the varied channels that they do have uh, in the United Kingdom, and, and whether it be radio, whether it be streamed, whether it be terrestrial channels, it, it, it's it's just become incongruous and um, uh, probably uh, very very low uh, value for money. And, and and the other thing, and I don't know if you intend to bring it up or not, maybe in in another question. I don't mean to scupper your list of questions there for me, Ted, but how on earth you can you can justify have people like Gary Lineker and other broadcasters on salaries of million pound plus and then refuse to provide a TV license for our pensioners uh, uh, for free is just completely beyond me, completely beyond me. Um, again, an, an, another nail in the coffin as far as I'm concerned. You know, if this comes to a vote in Parliament, well, more than just that, I'll be campaigning for it. But if this comes to a vote as and when it does in Parliament, I think you know which side I'll be on. Exactly. And yeah. well enough, as, as you mentioned, it is the question we're going to wrap up with because the BBC appears to be finding itself in a funding crisis due to the fact pensioners are refusing to cough up payment for the licence fee. I mean, so Marco, to make it sort of more specific, what have you noticed 
in regards to your own constituents? What, what are their feelings towards having to pay for the license fee? And you know, do the people of, of Dudley North feel represented by the corporation at all? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, there would be a significant majority, uh, you know, from time to time, MPs, uh, I- including myself, you know, you, you run surveys. What do you think of the BBC doing this, that or the other? I mean, for me, one of the biggest expressions of disconnect between the BBC and the, and, 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 and the views they seek to represent as a public service was in the, ref- in the run up to the uh, Brexit referendum where they clearly, clearly took a very, very remain uh, stance uh, time and time again, whether it was question time panels, whether it was how questions were being asked, the way uh, people were being interviewed. You, you often found you had a panel of seven or eight people and just one person was chosen who might have had a Brexit position on it. Um, and, and, and then broadcasters, you, 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 you could tell. Um, you know, they, they, they were not impartial. And my constituents voted uh, 72% for Brexit. And, and the BBC, just like most of the Remain establishment and others, just treated people with disdain if they had a pretense or, or, or of wanting to support Brexit type arguments. And, 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 and uh, people haven't forgotten that. Uh, and, and the senior management within the BBC should should heed these words because uh, people have been treated as if they were stupid, that they were not witnessing a national broadcaster taking a very, very uh, specific stance on, on something as fundamental, as important as, as, as what the Brexit referendum and all the debates surrounding it, 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 it was, and, and, uh, and I'm sorry, um, that was probably the main turning point for me, uh, the run up to the Brexit referendum and, 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 and subsequently as well, the way the BBC has, has, has behaved. It's, it, it, it's as if they're not listening. They are not listening. And, and, and it's as if they feel that they can treat the population of this country uh, as as as, um, as as people who are who are stupid or who are thick because we voted for Brexit and 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 they cannot see the way the BBC is playing this game. Um, so so yeah, uh, defund all the way, Ted. Brilliant. Well, Marco, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us today.